It really does feel like this is finally it. We've been patient for a long time, and uh, if it were not for outstanding, I'm going to say even tremendous move that we've seen in gold, I'd be a bit more tempered in terms of how I feel, you know, the potential for silver at this point. But gold's been on fire. Silver has nearly doubled it. If you look back to start from the start of the year, um, gold is up about 14%. Silver is up over 20%. And if you look at, I think, from the beginning of March or end of February, Gold's up about 15%, silver's up about 27%. So it has nearly doubled gold's return in the last, say, month and a half or so. And uh, I think I think this, this really has legs. Silver prices rose slightly to begin the trading session on Thursday, moving from $28.20 per troy ounce to 28.60, a 1.42% increase for the white metal. Silver prices have increased by 28.54% since early November when prices dropped to a low of $22.25 per troy ounce. As a result of Thursday's strong moves, the gold-silver ratio, which shows the number of troy ounces of silver needed to equal the value of one troy ounce of gold, fell from $83.72 on Wednesday to $83.54 on Thursday. Despite hitting solid resistance at $29.90, commodity analysts say the rising industrial demand and ongoing tensions in the Middle East will cause higher price gains for silver in 2024. According to Peter Krauth, publisher of The Silver Stock Investor and author of The Great Silver Bull, this is it. This is the great silver bull market, the big bull market most investors have been anticipating for years. Peter believes the bull market is just starting, and there is adequate evidence that it'll be sustained for an extended period. During a recent interview with Silver Bullion TV, Peter shares two important factors that show that the bull market is just starting. The first is how gold broke out to set a new all-time high across all major currencies. Peter says this tandem shows a lot of strength, which is very bullish for the precious metals sector. This could potentially lead to significant returns for investors, sparking optimism and excitement in the market. Secondly, despite the higher prices, people are selling their precious metals back to bullion dealers twice as often as they are buying. Investors who have been waiting for years to make some profit are quickly selling their coins and bars to bullion dealers. Fortunately, prices are not reflecting the high selling rate because of the record high demand from central banks and other big money investors. While central banks are tirelessly stacking gold, the industrial demand for silver far outweighs the metal's supply. Peter explains that the only reason silver's price is not much higher now is because of the inventories on exchanges. But all of that will change within the next 12 to 24 months. We will present clips from Peter Krauth's interview with Silver Bullion TV. But before we do, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications bell for more videos like this. Thank you and enjoy the video. Naturally, for the last two years, three years, people have been asking, well, look, we've been in, in, in uh, structural deficits, according to the Silver Institute, since uh, 2021. So that's the last three years. They're expecting one this year. They're expecting for several more years. And so naturally, investors are saying, well, how can you have ongoing structural deficits? And, and the price of silver is not running. It's not reacting. And we're talking about substantial deficits. If you add the last three years, we're at, I think it's something like 550 million. If you add this year, you're going to probably be at somewhere around 700 million uh, cumulative over the last, say, four years, including this year. The last three years at 550 is more than half of an entire year's worth of silver supply. And that's if you include mine and recycling supply. So, I had the sense that there had to be, have been some kind of uh, other source of silver that especially industrial users were tapping. And because it was not putting additional pressure, let's say, on mining or on recycling, that it was also not putting upward pressure on the price. So if you can kind of draw down on stockpiles, then that would make sense. So I started doing some some research and and and, and uh, found details on what the uh, inventories were. And these I call sort of secondary inventories because they just sort of sit there as, when you have years of, of um, say, uh, structural um, surpluses, these inventories will accumulate on, on the, the futures exchanges. They'll find their way perhaps into ETFs, for example, silver ETFs. Uh, so these secondary supplies are just sort of sitting there and 
If you look at the, the inventory charts of the London, LBMA London, if you look at Shanghai, if you look at the, uh, the COMEX, in the last three years, they've all been down about 40%. And if you look at their registered silver, which is the silver that's actually available for delivery, that's down about 70%. So when I saw, and you know, there, there's no sort of uh, perfect conclusive proof that this is what's happening, but you'd have to imagine that the, the industry facing, if, if the sector is facing these large deficits and the industry is getting their silver nonetheless somewhere and not pushing the price up, then they're drawing down on inventories. And, and, and to see these inventories shrink that much, we're talking about 800 to a billion ounces, perhaps in the last three, four years. Um, the, uh, the, the global, I, ha I have a really, really interesting chart that I put together. I looked at what had been happening at SLV. SLV is the world's largest silver ETF. It's the first it's established in 2006, has about $10 billion of market cap data. In fact, over the last three years, inventories in the SLV are down about 40%. And what was really interesting was I looked at a, a price of a chart that shows concurrently the price of SLV and the uh, amount of silver held by SLV. And until 2021, so you had about 15 years of history, um, you never saw a period where you had either a, a sideways price for the units or for silver, let's say, uh, price for SLV units, and a, a considerable, notable, sustained drawdown in the silver held by SLV. That to me was quite the revelation. I thought, okay, um, you know, this says to me that you've got large industrial users are buying long futures contracts. They're standing for delivery, taking delivery when they mature. They could certainly easily be buying large quantities of silver ETFs. Uh, and when you own enough units of a given ETF, you can ask for the physical metal in, in exchange. I believe that explains these drawdowns and the capping, so to speak, on the silver price. And I still, and I also think that this can only go on for so long, these inventories, uh, because we're not getting more mine supply or recycling, n nothing material. So these drawdowns can only go on so long till these inventories, uh, you know, are, are completely empty. The secondary inventories on exchanges like the LBMA and COMEX have helped suppress prices preventing silver from assuming its true value. However, Peter says these inventories will only last a little longer. He expects that there won't be any more silver to fulfill demand within the next 12 to 24 months. Peter's expectation is supported by a recent report from Canada's TD Bank. The report also predicts that the large consumers buying silver off these exchanges will deplete the inventories within the next 12 to 24 months, leaving silver free to assume its true value. When all of these inventories are completely depleted, Peter says the resulting silver deficit will be so severe that it will make headlines worldwide. Let's get back to the interview. About three or four weeks ago, I was speaking, I was at a conference and speaking to the CEO of a large primary silver miner. They sell about half their production to China, the other half to the West. And they said that the Chinese want the silver so badly, they're coming to them and they're saying, we will pay for the silver two weeks in advance of delivery and we're willing to pay up to three up uh, three dollars an ounce above spot price. Th that says everything to you. You know that the market is very very tight. They absolutely need this material, and uh, I just think that uh, you know uh, it, it's it's much tighter than than uh, we're probably under the or most of us are under the impression of uh, or that we're led to believe. It's it's it is very much a tight market. Recycling could perhaps start to become, I think, a little bit of a, of a factor. Not worthwhile right now. Small amounts of silver go into, you know, millions of applications and, and electronics and, uh, for example, you know, switches, on-off switches in electronics, uh, if you're talking about a smartphone or, a, or a, an iPad or something like that. Tiny amounts, not worth the cost of trying to recycle, at least not right now. Um, you know, if you get to $40, $50 an ounce silver, perhaps then that starts to become more interesting. As we know, uh, solar is a huge source of demand for silver, and we can talk about that a little bit more. But that's also 
very, very difficult with the technology that we have right now to try to recycle. There's one company that I have read about, I believe it's a French company, that uh, they feel they can recycle the majority of the silver in, in solar panels. But, uh, you know, th that's that's not going to get us that far. And how profitable is it is becomes another issue. A and the demand is just through the roof. I mean, there was news in the last few days that India um, uh, is is uh, ha is launching the world's largest renewable energy park in, uh, in Gujarat. And it's going to be five times the size of Paris. <laughs> that's going to take a lot of silver. It's it's a solar it's a solar park that we've also recently gotten uh, some data on I Indian imports for silver for February. They were at a record 70.7 million ounces of silver. That's 64 percent of their annual imports last year in in February alone. So it's going through the roof. Uh, you know, India economically is doing relatively well. Massive population, of course, and it require and and is you know moving towards uh, if if anything even if gradually moving towards uh, renewable energy and um and and consuming a lot of silver not to mention the silver that they they consume personally for investment purposes because they're they're big fans and they understand silver as much as they understand gold so they're buying it personally uh, as i say for uh, for investment purposes so that's a very big market um and there are all kinds of forecasts there's um Baker Steel put some projections out. They looked at different uh, critical metals going over the next, just the next three years. Um, and, and silver, they think, will have a 20% deficit uh, by 2027 over its, uh, over versus supply. They, uh, they looked out to 2030 and they think that there's going to be at least a 20% uh, deficit in silver versus the supply. These are huge numbers, <laughs> you know, when you're talking about billions of ounces and they see a deficit. Um, they, well, we've had deficits since 2021. They see them continuing and growing right through 2030. So the outlook for silver is tremendous. Uh, I think really people need to to pay attention uh, if they don't have a position yet. Look at it very carefully. Do your research um, and, and you don't have to take positions through the riskiest uh, methods or options. There are all kinds of options, but I think everyone should have at least some exposure to, uh, to, this, uh, to this market. According to the Silver Institute, silver's supply deficit is expected to grow by 17% in 2024 to 215.3 million ounces. Industrial demand is also forecast to climb by 9% to a new record high as the world proceeds with the transition to green energy. The Institute reports that investor interest in silver has improved in the first quarter of this year due to optimism that the U.S. Federal Reserve will start cutting rates later this year. It added that a fall in real yields will favor investment in precious metals into the year's second half. Do you agree with Peter Krauth and the Silver Institute about silver prospects as an investment asset in 2024? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications bell so you get notified every time we upload a video. We appreciate the support and see you in the next one.